Hey, what is up you guys and welcome to this episode of Eddie's Customs and Restorations. Okay, so let me go ahead and start off by telling you that I completely overthought this problem and I actually did not have a problem with the uh, start capacitor and the run capacitor which are located on top of this motor. Uh, in the past I had a problem with the motor itself, the run motor here, which is the one that turns the pump on the other side. So let me just kind of give you some symptoms just in case you're facing these problems yourself. Uh, the start capacitor is the one that takes um, the responsibility of starting and giving the initial jolt to this electric motor. So if you have a problem that it starts to hum or it simply doesn't kick the motor on, it might be this capacitor. Now if it seems that it wants to kick on but then it doesn't run, well then it must be the other one. Now here I have an example of a start capacitor. If you must replace this one, if you see that yours is swelled up, perhaps the back end of it is swelled up, or if you simply see a big old bump on it like that, this tells you that this capacitor is no good. Okay, now you're going to have some values up front here and you're going to want to match those up to the replacement that you find. Now if indeed you do have this problem, I'll go ahead and post an Amazon affiliate link down in the description so you can get yourself some capacitors and you can get your machine back up and running. And here's my old electric motor that burnt out and burnt out that start capacitor that I just showed you. So here I'm unscrewing the caps because of course I completely overthought the problem. I thought that because of the fact that the motor was kind of bogging down when it was running, I thought maybe the run capacitor was starting to fail on me, but it was not. But regardless, thought it was a good time to demonstrate how to replace these capacitors. So here I'm removing the start capacitor and I have the other one there from the other motor. And then here's the uh, run capacitor. Now before you get started on replacing your capacitors, you want to kind of like neutralize their voltage because sometimes they may be carrying some voltage in them still. Uh, make sure your unit is completely disconnected and then you can simply get a tool with an insulated handle. In my case I have my uh, needle nose pliers here and they have insulated handles. Uh, and then you can simply touch uh, the two prongs together on top and that will neutralize any energy that may have still been in the capacitors. Now also make sure that the two prongs from the capacitor don't touch the metal cover because that will cause a short. Now here you'll notice that I had to take off uh, some little rubber bands that were around the other uh, capacitor and the reason for that is because it was not fitting in the housing. So sometimes capacitors they'll be a little bit wider than, than the others but they'll still have the same values. Now this is simply a company design. Sometimes companies make them slightly larger than others but as long as they share the same values your air compressor will run as it should. Now one way to tell them apart because they don't always tell you on the capacitor case or body is with the printed on values that you see on the body of, of each capacitor. So on a start capacitor you're gonna see the higher values like for example in our case here we're gonna have 260 through 311 UF which UF stands for microfarads on a run capacitor you're gonna have smaller values like 25 microfarads so again for like a start capacitor you're gonna have values from like a hundred to eight hundred microfarads and on a run capacitor you're gonna have like 1 through 100 microfarads. And here is when I realized that the capacitors were not my problem. <laughs> so I have indeed found the problem. So I went ahead and took this screw out, that screw out, that screw, that screw, and that one and that one right there 
and that one right there. Okay, I went ahead and took all those screws out. That way this, uh, this cover can come off. This is why we were smelling burnt rubber and this is why we kept hearing the squealing coming out from the back end. For a moment I thought maybe my air pump was seizing up but I had good oil and everything and then uh, when I took this cover off initially I, I turned the, the pump as I'm doing right now and I can tell that it's it's free it's not uh, seized up in any way so that is a good sign that means that the piston inside and everything is in good operation your compressor or your pump is not seized up so that is not your problem okay but in our case the reason we're having so much slippage and it sounds like the motor is not grabbing on or having trouble turning the pump well the reason it's having trouble turning the pump is because it does not have a good firm grab on to the pump pulley okay and that is because there's a bunch of play and of course it's just simply not tied onto the onto the other pump pulley okay so let me go ahead and get a part number here for you I will also post an Amazon affiliate link down in the description. It looks like there's a part number here. Sorry if that's not going to show well on camera, but it looks like A44 4L460. Uh, but that's what's on there. Regardless, I'll go ahead and post, like I said, uh, an affiliate link down in the description. That way you guys can simply click on that. It'll take you to Amazon and you guys can get yourself a new belt if indeed you do have this same problem I do. So just to give you an idea on what you can do, you can get yourself some plain old two by fours if you have any lying around. And you're gonna put the first one, you're gonna put it over there in the back, okay? Right over here. Just so you can put pressure on this motor. And then the other one is gonna go like, like this, okay? So that's gonna leave you some room so that you can push on this so that you're not pushing on the case, or you're not stressing this line. And then the other end of, of a pry bar that you put is gonna push on that piece of wood. So let me show you now what I'm talking about because I know it sounds confusing. This is my pry bar. Okay, this pry bar is gonna hook over here first like that. And then this one is the one that I'm gonna apply pressure on. I'm gonna pull that way on my handle and watch this motor as it moves. See right there, I'm putting tension already on the belt. Now, I wish I had an, a camera guy so I can go over there and show you, but now the belt's under tension. Of course, you have to loosen up the bolts at the motor. Uh, you have four bolts, they're half inch. So just get yourself a half inch wrench and loosen them up from the bottom. Let me swing the camera around so you can see what I'm talking about. Okay, so the motor's right here. You're gonna have two that are right here on the front, which I may or may not be able to get to. Okay, there you go. There you can see them, there's two right there. And then you have the other two over there. Those are half inch, as I mentioned. All right, so we went ahead and replaced the belt. Uh, got the belt off of Amazon. Uh, A44 4L460 is the part number. So went ahead and ordered, and ordered it and got the tension going already so it's nice and tight so let's give it a go and see if we got our sound still or if we have indeed fixed the problem let's turn it on now Well, I hope this information was useful. If it was, please hit that like button and subscribe to my channel. It gives YouTube feedback and lets them know that this is good content. Thank you all for watching. Until next time.